Hello, everybody. I hope everybody had a great weekend. Happy Sunday to everybody. Hope everybody's doing well. Do the old Sunday dinner thing. If not, TV dinners work for me. As long as somebody else is making it. I don't care. Just saying. Um, I'm going to do something a little different today um, at the beginning of this. Um, I'm going to talk about a Canadian. And he's a minister. And this fella kind of encompasses everything I believe in, but I'm not a churchgoer because I'm not a Christian. So this is from Ed Trevers, a Canadian minister, Reverend Ed Trevers of St. Margaret's of Scotland Contemporary Anglican Church in Nova Scotia. And this is their mission statement. I found this really, really cool. If I was a churchgoer, this is the one I'd pick. It says, for the glory of God and the welfare of God's people, we are committed to share the love, joy, peace, and hope of God with our friends, family, and neighbors. Though uh, through vibrant, meaningful, and authentic ministries, worship and fellowship, we will strive to reach out into the world, emulating the compassion and devotion of his servant, our patron, St. Margaret's of Scotland, and to be the hands and feet of Jesus Christ alive and active in our community. How's that? To be Christ-centered, mission-minded, and community-embracing all people across the spectrum of cultural, ethnic, racial, gender, sexual orientation, ages, and class diversity as full members of the family of God. Pretty much drags everybody under the umbrella get you out of the rain, so to speak. So on Ed, uh, Reverend Ed's YouTube channel, it's just Reverend Ed Trevers, um, he gives thought-provoking talks every few days, once a week. But this week, he presented a statement from an anonymous author that I believe in my soul to be the truth. Now, this author... Says, and it's called, Here's the Truth. Trump supporters don't measure his success by what he does for them. They measure his success by what he does against people they don't like. That's why they see him as successful. This is why they will never abandon him. His tormenting of, of others is what sustains them. He knows um, who they don't like. And he is using them to say, see, I'm just like you, only I'll say it. Now, Trump says the others are vermin. They are taking black jobs. They come from countries that set them free from prisons and mental institutions, mental hospitals and asylums. They are rapists. They will rape your daughter. They are getting all the money that you aren't getting. They are given houses that you can't afford. Um, and Kamala is allowing this. Well, he calls her Kamala. Um, and he says that he alone can fix it, which you and I both know equates to Only I'll make it worse. You thought it was bad before? I'll make it worse. I'll fix them. Now, his favorite line is, I know more about, fill in the blank, than anyone else ever. Let's turn the page on that crap, shall we? Now, he says anyone who talks shit about the uh, Justice Department should be jailed. But it's okay for him to say Katanji uh, Brown Jackson is unbelievably disrespectful, which you and I both know is a trope. He can, but you can't. Because everybody's prosecuting him. It's all about him. Nobody else has ever been prosecuted before, only him. They're doing this to him. Doesn't matter that he committed all the crimes. And they're finally catching up to him. That doesn't matter. 
Um, this is a good, you can't, this is what he said. Um, this is really good. You can't get elected with open borders and transgender operations all over the place. You send your children to school as one, uh, as a boy and he comes back as a girl without the parents' uh, permission. Can't have men playing in women's sports. It's a corrupt justice system and a corrupt DOJ. Except, of course, for the judges he put on the Supreme Court and Aileen Canna, who dismissed his I stole classified documents and secrets that protected our country. I stole them, but she dismissed the case because she said that special counsel isn't a thing. It's not legal. It's only been around since the Civil War. And Georgia Judge Scott McPhee, he's okay too because he threw out three of his 41 counts of trying to overturn the election. So that's what we're up against with him. So he had a rally in Pittsburgh this weekend. And his rally, he always says he has the biggest crowds. His rally had maybe 150 people at it. And I think it was at the airport. Um, he sounded like a Dickens funeral director when he was there, giving a dying eulogy. And here they come. They came down. And they're going to be around. That type of thing? Yeah. We always know. Right? Um, Kamala, on the other hand, is trying to bring positive message about uplifting everyone up, Republicans and Democrats, giving people tax credits to uh, the lower to middle, and, uh, to middle class, and a chance to catch up with the economy and the cost of living. Now, Donald is telling voters they live in a third world country, the justice system is crooked, and he drones on and on and on about how horrible the United States is. Well, if it's that friggin' horrible, why does he want to be president of the worst country on the planet, apparently? Um, he was on the Don Bongioni, whoever the hell that guy is, on his show, and he was talking about Harvey Weinstein. And he said that Harvey Weinstein got schlonged really bad. I don't know, is he getting, uh Yeah, he said, I mean, he they gave it to him really bad. We didn't think he would get it that bad. So I guess as a fellow grapist, he knows all about how bad it can get. I mean, 80, uh, $87 million worth is what I'm thinking. But... Um, He's, uh, Trump's got 26 other charges or accusers in the wings. And somewhere there was a 13-year-old girl, and now I'm hearing there might be a couple little boys. But that's just in the wind. I haven't researched enough to tell you about that. Um, but, I mean, he's praising these guys, and the evangelicals are putting him up saying, God, put him down here to be our president. I think God put him down here to test you. That's what I think God put him down here for. Why else would he let somebody that vile try and run as your president and suck you in that hard that you're going to vote for him? Why is that? Because the man upstairs there, he's testing you to see how stupid you really are. And if you vote somebody like that, that means you believe in what he's telling you. You believe the lies. And liars get punished in religious circles, apparently. Now, I mean, so they're both grapists, and like hangs with like. That's what I'm saying. Then while he was at his weenus rally in uh, Pennsylvania at the airport at Latrobe, um, he thought it would be appropriate to talk about Arnold Palmer. Ar um, Arnold Palmer was born in Latrobe, Pennsylvania. And he did a lot of good for that town. He also, I don't know if anybody knows this, but he also served in the uh, Coast Guard for three years. That's right, served in uniform for three years. So he served in Latrobe. Uh, he was at, uh, Trump was at that rally, a 150-person rally in Latrobe, Pennsylvania, and thought it would be appropriate to talk about Arnold Palmer and the size of his um, putter, 
for lack of a better word. Now, Trump went on for 12 minutes, 12 minutes, about the late, great Arnold Palmer. Arnold was all man. And I say that in all due respect of women. I'm pretty sure women in the crowd would be cringing, most of them anyway. And then he did that dirty, <laughs> yeah, the guys would come out of the locker room in the showers and say, that man, that guy was all men. <laughs> right? And he told stories of uh, Arnold Palmer in the locker room and in the showers for 12 minutes. But Trump had to rely on secondhand information. Because according to Stormy, she spilled the beans on his weenus and his incredibly dysfunctional performance, shall we say. So he, would, he wouldn't have the guts to show up in the locker room with a guy that was all man, for lack of better words. Now, I guess only Waltine Saltine Nauda there is the only one that sees that anymore because he's the little cabin boy that sits there and dresses him and is there at his every little whim. And diaper change, I would imagine. Um, he is his dresser, after all. Now, apparently Palmer's daughter was interviewed and she said her dad was not a fan of Trump's. My dad didn't like people who acted like they were better than other people. He had no patience for people that were dishonest, and he had no patience for people who cheat. My dad was disciplined. He was appalled by Trump's lack of civility and his lack of character. One moment stood out in her mind from the 2016 campaign before, just before her father passed, when he watched Trump on TV making one of his racist, disgustful campaign speeches, shall we call them? He couldn't believe the arrogance and crudeness of this man who was the nominee of the Republican Party that he loved. And he said he believed, uh, the Republican Party that he believed in and said, well, they're not as smart as we thought they were. What would my dad think of Trump today? I think he would cringe. So that's your Sunday, your Sunday little lecture from Naughty Nana Does. Little wine. No cheese right now because I'm getting ready to cook supper. It's 5.30. So yeah. Um, that's the way things went. So if you like Ed Trevor's, check him out. He's a pretty interesting man. When I need something thoughtful, I'll go to his channel and see what he's talking about. I never turn them off. I always watch their 12, 15 minute videos, that's all. And they're really good. So check him out. Another fellow Canadian. But anyway, that's my little spiel for today, folks. Anyway, like me, love me, share me. If you're new, subscribe. If you're um, already subscribed, better check and uh, resubscribe. Some of you might have to. So anyway, like me, love me, share me. I appreciate it very much. Helps my uh, channel grow. So you take care of you so you can take care of somebody else. I love you all so much and thanks for tuning in all the time. I appreciate it. Mwah. I love you. Be good to you first.